Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another live stream. It is Friday, I hope you all have had a great week and are looking forward to the weekend. The sun is shining but we haven't got, you know, it's, it's not good news that we're going to be talking about today. It is bad news unfortunately. I'm sure you all heard last night Everton confirmed that Jean-Philippe Gabamin had suffered another injury, this time to his Achilles and it's due to be out for at least six months. Dominic King then added to that announcement by saying that Jean-Philippe Cabamon could miss um, the rest of 2020 and may not return to football until next year. And this is obviously, you know, this is really, really disappointing and it's, it's quite upsetting as well because it's coming from a player who, who's, whose career, especially since he's joined Everton, has been absolutely struck with injury after injury after injury. And, you know, Jean-Philippe Cabamon come out literally a week ago and said that he feels like he's only three or four weeks away from being able to get back in and playing consistent football with the team and ultimately only a few weeks away from returning to Premier League football and he, he felt that he had a part to play when the Premier League does return um, you know, for the remaining nine fixtures. So obviously it's really, really gutting to see that he's picked up another injury. Um, uh, one thing I can say is that there'll be no Evertonian, there'll be no one on this planet that's more disappointed and that's more upset with this than the player himself and um, the player will be absolutely gutted he picked it up by playing a game of foot tennis with Andre Gomez after the training session it was in his spare time and um, it was separate to the training he was playing the, the the game of foot tennis and what I can only assume was that he overstretched for for the tennis ball and, and you know ended up injuring himself and again like I said, it's really, really disappointing and, and I do massively, massive feel, massively feel sorry for Jean-Philippe Cabamon because he's a player that come in and it was a big opportunity to come into you know a Premier League side, now a side managed by Carlo Ancelotti and he felt like he had an important part to play in the remainder of the Premier League season. And listen, if Jean-Philippe Cabamon's fit, I think Jean-Philippe Cabamon starts for Everton Football Club, even though I've only seen him a couple of times, even though I've only seen him you know on a couple of appearances at the start of the season. I think when you look at the other midfielders that we've got currently at Everton Football Club, you know, Andre Gomez is a, is a certain, he, he fits into the squad straight away, you've then got, you know, Fabian Delph, Jean-Philippe Cabamon, Gilfie Sigurdsson, Morgan Schneiderlin and, and Tom Davis, and for me, Jean-Philippe Cabamon is the better option um, th than all of those, even though I haven't seen him anywhere near as much as I've seen the others, I just know he's a lot younger, um, he's a lot taller, he's got a, a more of a physical presence than any of the, the players mentioned, he can also play centre-back as well, so he's got that to his game, so listen, it's, it's really, really disappointing, and me and Jordan were only talking last night um, about the potential of Jean-Philippe Cabamon, you know, even starting the Merseyside derby when that um, is played on the 20th of June, and, and if not the derby you know John Philip Abamon coming back into the team and and potentially filling that spot that we you know we we, we need filling um, the winner just gone and gay left and again you know it, it's it is it, it's not good that a player that we've brought in in such a key position has been struck down with so many injuries this season you know we were bringing John Philip Abamon in to replace arguably our most important player um in you know just a gone again in a position that is absolutely clinical to to our footballing team certainly the formation that we played for the majority of this season with the you know the one up front and, and the two wingers and the two central defensive midfielders a disagana gay's position in that in that formation is absolutely crucial um, and obviously selling him to PSG in the summer bringing John Philip Cabamon in it almost felt like right okay we've brought in a, a like for like replacement here we've brought in a central defensive midfielder who is very physical got the presence can do the run and round uh, is happy to do you know the, the dirty work and also can fit in and play centre back if needed almost like we've got you know two players for the for the price of one really and then obviously uh, Cabamon played the first couple of games was struck down with injury and then ever since he's you know he's had injury on top of injury every time he seems to be regaining fitness every time he seems to be you know closer and closer to um to return into fitness um he, you know he gets struck down with another injury and again very similar in this occasion Gabamon only a couple of weeks away according to himself and according to staff at Everton from returning to football and returning to full-time training with his teammates and then he's struck down with another injury I've got a, a little staff for you I don't know how true this is but I read it and I can't imagine it to be untrue because I just don't know why somebody would make it up but it's really really interesting since John Philip Abamon's debut I believe it was in May 2013 or since May 
2013. Jean-Philippe Abamon had only spent 141 days injured across near enough six years. He joined Everton in July 2019. So over six years, in fact, he'd spent 141 days injured, obviously in, in different spells for uh, at different times for mines and different clubs, etc. Since joining Everton less than a year ago in July or August, July it was, wasn't it? July 2019. He has spent 285 days injured. So he spent double the days that he'd spent injured in six years, in less than a year at Everton Football Club. And I really, really do feel sorry for him. I've seen a lot of fans on, on social media and stuff saying Terminator's contact and get rid of him. I, I don't think this is how we need to approach this. For me, it's absolutely vital that we support John Philip Obama as much as that we can, not just as a fan base, but as a football club as well. A football club needs to be so supportive of Gabamon. Us as fans need to be so supportive of Gabamon, and we just have to keep praying for a healthy recovery and a quick recovery for him and that he does make a full recovery and that he can be playing football again because it's really you know not a nice situation and like I said, the player himself will, will be feeling the you know worse than anybody else. Um, but there is a conversation to be had as to that whether you know Carlo Ancelotti now needs to go out and, uh, and bring in a central defensive midfielder because ultimately we brought in John Philip Abamon and then he had his, his first injury and we were sort of thinking right okay we've got you know Fabian Delph and we've got. Tom Davis and Morgan Schneiderlin, but they're only there for, for sort of the time being. When John Philip Obama regains fitness, he'll be the number one midfielder next to Andre Gomez. And then he got another injury, and that was that sort of message was pushed forward. And it was right, okay, well, when Gabamon returns from this injury, he'll be the number one midfielder. And again, we're pushing it again to saying, right, okay, well, when he returns from injury, he'll be in next to Andre Gomez. But ultimately, the reality of the situation is he looks like he's not going to return to injury for another six months um, and possibly won't even play football again again until 2021 according to some reports and for me I don't think Carlo Ancelotti can go into to next season with the view of well we don't need to buy a defensive midfielder because John Philip Gabamon can fit in there when he's fit because there's no guarantee that Gabamon isn't going to pick up another injury along the recovery and you know it just uh, let's just say he doesn't pick up another injury during the, you know, now and, uh, and the time he recovers. Um, he's going to be out for at least six months and we cannot play a large part of next season with you know our two midfielders as Andre Gomez and one of Morgan Schneider and Gilfie Sigurdsson, Tom Davis or Fabian Delft. We just can't. There's not enough energy in there. There's not enough pace. There's not enough quality. We just can't, especially if we want to be challenging for, for a European place. Forget your top four. Forget your top six. Um, sorry, forget your top four. Forget your top six. Forget your challenging for the league or whatever if we want to be challenging for that seventh place minimum next season we need another defensive midfielder if jean philip Abamon is injured which of course he is and um, so that's a different discussion to be had it's not a case of terminators contact get rid of him he's just injury prone because that's not how football works and you know alan myers made a fantastic point on twitter yesterday and he said that just because a player's had a lot of injuries in a short period of time or a lot of injuries in his career doesn't mean that when he recovers from the final injury that he's had or the latest injury that he's had that he's then prone to all injuries you know a player can get multiple multiple injuries and it is just pure bad luck on John Philip Abamon's side and that we have to be behind him and that we have to support him that doesn't mean that Carlo Angelotti shouldn't go out and spend 10 15 20 million on a central defensive midfielder because ultimately we need a central defensive midfielder I spoke uh, earlier on this week about how bringing a disregard in the game wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for Jean Philippe Abamon because it would mean there was competition and it would mean we'd have two quality players in that position now I think it's pretty much you know, it, it's a necessity that we bring in a defensive midfielder, whether it's a Jusagana guy or somebody else. I know I've been linked with Wendell, um, who also plays in that position. But for me now, we, we've gone from we've gone from last week needing a right back and an, and a creative attacking midfielder as a necessity to now needing a central defensive midfielder, a creative attacking midfielder, and a right back as a necessity, and also probably a centre half as well. Um, but you know, you, you, I do really, really feel for, for Jean Philip Abamon, and he needs every single bit of our support. Um, and you know, we need to back him, and we need to be there in this corner, and so do the football club. And I know the football club will because they're absolutely fantastic. Whenever a player gets injured or whenever a player is struggling, they're absolutely brilliant in you know backing them up and uh, and sort of you know being there to support them. And we need to. Do with his fans we shouldn't be jumping at the terminators contact he's not good enough get rid of him you know we should just be saying you know you know it's sorry to hear it good luck with you your recovery you know get well soon keep your head up you'll return better and then in the meantime looking for a, a, a whether it be a short term or a long term sort of uh, replacement to come in and play in that defensive midfield role personally for me i don't want to see us go and buy 
an okay defensive midfielder with the view of that, well, this midfielder that we're buying is only going to be here for six months and then, you know, Gabamon's going to come back in and he won't play again and then he'll leave the football club. I want us to go out and buy a defensive midfielder that we can go, this player is playing every single week and when Gabamon regains fitness, them two can fight it out for that position um, and ultimately that'll give John Fuller Gabamon a, a lot of motivation to, you know, in his recovery and getting fit if he knows that there's competition there as well. So it's two different conversations. Like I said, we, we shouldn't be diving at the get rid of him but we should, you know, be supporting them, and and you know that doesn't mean that there should be a, a view to bring in another defensive midfielder this summer. And um, we've had a lot of players in the in the past that have been absolutely fantastic, but have struggled with injuries throughout their entire career. And and the different, you know, the the strange thing is with Sean Phillip Cabaman is he hasn't struggled with injuries throughout his career. He really, really hasn't. One hundred and forty-one days injured in six years is not a lot whatsoever it, it's really really not when you think about the fact that he's been injured for double that since joining Everton that's really really not a lot so you know I've seen a lot of people saying it's the Everton look it's it's Everton it's Everton this you know maybe it is but you know you do have to feel for him you, you really really do we'll go in to talking a little bit more about why Adisha Garnagay may be the perfect player to bring in at this point. Uh, I do just want to say, obviously, I put out a little video yesterday um, discussing the announcement of the Premier League's return, but we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth. Uh, the Premier League have announced that they will return on Wednesday, the 17th of June, in just a couple of weeks' time. I believe it's two weeks on Wednesday, um, with two fixtures on the Wednesday. It's Aston Villa versus Sheffield United and Manchester City versus Arsenal, and that is because those are the two games in hand that were due to be played prior to the league suspension and according to reports Everton are likely to play Liverpool in the Merseyside derby on Saturday the 20th of June so again two weeks um, on or three weeks sorry tomorrow um, there was sort of reports in uh, when when the, the uh, announcement was first made as to state that the, the Merseyside police have said that um, Everton can play Liverpool at Goodison Park as long as Liverpool haven't got the opportunity to win the Premier League in that game so Basically, if Manchester City beat Arsenal on the Wednesday, Liverpool cannot, cannot mathematically win the league, even if they beat us. They'd have to win or draw the next game, I believe. But if, if Arsenal beat Manchester City, then mathematically Liverpool could win the league at Goodison. If that would have been the case, the game would have been held in a neutral venue. However, if they didn't have an opportunity to win the league, it was due to be held at Goodison Park. There's now been an update on that, um, and it's now saying that uh, apparently the game will be played in a neutral venue anyway, because it's... Um, it's classed as a as a you know a, a key game or, or whatever capital liverpool actually said that the merseyside derby along with other games that liverpool can win the premier league will be played at neutral venues and then there was another report a little bit later on in the day as to state that uh, a numerous amount of games there's i think there's a manchester derby in there as well there's a couple of other key games that will be played at neutral venues anyway regardless of whether there's an, an opportunity for to liverpool to win the league or not and um, if you're enjoying the scene by the way please do hit that like button it does mean a massive amount to me really really do appreciate it if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe as well only takes a second to get the video share get the steam share let's get as many people in here as possible let me know your thoughts on the return of the premier league as well um listen i think i said it briefly in the, in the little video that i put out i think the model argument is irrelevant at the moment and um, because the premier league's coming back whether we like it or not whether we agree with it or not it's coming back and um, so i think it's probably about time that we just sort of you know i'm not saying don't have a go at the Premier League. I'm not saying don't fight for what you believe is right, but what I'm saying is I think as, as, a, as a fan base, now certainly as Evertonians, we should be looking forward to to um, to the return of the Premier League, looking forward to watching the Blues again, and hopefully we can only pray that it's as safe as possible. We can only pray that the environment is as safe as it can be, uh, and in doing that, we should be looking forward to seeing the likes of, you know, Richarlison, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, uh, Mason Algate, Jordan Pickford, Luca Dean, everybody, every single Everton player coming back and, and playing in that Royal Blue shirt, and hopefully getting a big, big win in the Merseyside derby in their first game back. Um, but anyway, going back to the Jean-Philippe Aubameyang point and, and the central defensive midfield point, um, like I said, I think it's really, really interesting. I think it makes... Um, I think it makes Carlo Ancelotti's job a lot harder this summer. I think it makes Marcel Brands' job a lot harder. And for me, I inadvertently think it means that we're probably going to sign Jibril Sidibe. Now, when you think about it, if we were going into this summer... Now, I, I'm going to... 
going off what uh, I read last week or earlier this week, sorry, from the Independent, the Independent, um, who are quite a reliable source, to be fair, they stated that Everton are, you know, not willing or unable to spend £30 million on Lille centre-back Gabriel because we haven't got the finances to do it currently with the current situation in the world and, and the pandemic, etc. So we wouldn't be paying £30 million on one player. Remember that. Put that in the back of your head uh, and remember that for every conversation that we're going to have following that. Um, off the back of that, you know, we we knew that this summer we needed, as a matter of urgency, a right-back, a central attacking midfielder or a creative midfielder and the centre-half. We knew that they, them three were a necessity. Now, the least necessary out of those three, I'd probably say, is centre-half because we've got three. You know, we've got one really good centre-half and two decent centre off. Now again, I know Michael Keane and Yeddy mean it all fantastic and they're probably not, you know, Champions League uh, level players or maybe even Europa League level players, but they they they're okay for now. They're okay for now. Um so then you're looking at right back and you're looking at centre attack and midfield. There's two positions that we massively need to look at this summer or creative midfield. We've got no creative midfielder. We've got nobody in that midfield that create. When you look at our midfield, we've got Andre Gomez, Gilfie Sigurdsson, Morgan Schneider, and Fabian Delph, and Tom Davis, and obviously Jean Philip Gabamon, but Gabamon's injured. That now out of those five. Nobody creates anything. Gilfie Sigurdsson, we had that creative spark with Gilfie Sigurdsson last season where he was, you know, scoring left, right and centre. He was hitting them from 30 yards and he were going in. He was assisting. He was using his feet. He was using his passing. He was fantastic last season. And I honestly don't understand how Gilfie Sigurdsson has managed to drop so much this season. But going off of this season, we haven't got a creative midfield player whatsoever. Andre Gomez, for as much as people like him and for as good as he is, he's not a creative midfield player. And neither are any of the others uh, including Gilfie Sigurdsson at this moment in time. So that's, uh, you know, a, a desperate need. Right back is also a desperate need. Now, I think Carlo Ancelotti and Marcel Brands would have had enough time and probably enough funds to go out and buy a decent attacking creative midfielder and a decent right back this season without having to purchase Jabril Sidibe if they didn't want to. Now that we almost certainly have to go out and buy a defensive midfielder on top of an attacking midfielder and on top of a right back, I think that the club are more than likely going to purchase uh, Jabril Sadibe, if I'm being honest with you. From a business point of view, and from the fact that Monaco are even willing to drop Sadibe's price down from the original asking price that's in his contract, the original clause, which states £40 million, uh, Monaco are willing to drop that down to, to uh, a little bit less. And I'm, I'm assuming it'll be potentially between £8 and £12 million, pounds, something like that. And I think Marcel Brands and I think the club will look at that and they'll think, right, OK, we can either bring Sadibe in for £10 million, pounds, let's say, which isn't an awful lot of money, Yes, okay, he's not fantastic defensively, but he's got energy, he's got stamina, he gets up and down, he can do a job for a season or 18 months, 18 months a year, 18 months, maybe two seasons, he can do a job until we're, we've got that financial stability back, uh, everything's back to normal and we can go out and buy a right back for the future because we're not going to be buying a Max Allens this summer, we're not going to be buying the next best right back, we can't afford them um, and like I said, there's other positions that we have to focus on as well. So I was speaking to my dad about this the other day and I, I said, I think Carlo Ancelotti might be faced with, a, with a, uh, a problem where he's thinking, right, okay, we either don't bring in Jibril Sadibe and then we have to focus an awful lot of time on bringing in another right back. This, of course, is under the assumption that John Joe Kenny will go back out on loan. If John Joe Kenny's good enough to come in and deemed good enough to come in and play week in, week out, then the Sadibe argument or, or discussion is, is irrelevant, really, because Kenny will come in. But let's assume that John Joe Kenny will go out again for another season on loan at Schalke or, or elsewhere. If... Carlo Ancelotti and Marcel Brands look at Jibril Sadibe and go, we don't want to bring him in. He's not good enough defensively. Okay, he'd be for £8 million, but we don't want to spend the money, so we're not going to do it. That means that Ancelotti and Brands have to then search for a right-back, look for a right-back who can come in at a decent price, settle into the team, fits our style of play. All of that work that'll go on behind, uh, behind scouting, scouting a right-back and bringing a right-back in takes away from the time that we can spend and the money that we can spend on bringing in an attacking midfielder and a defensive midfielder. So I think Ancelotti might be faced with two scenarios. One being we don't bring Sadibe in and we focus you know, a little bit of time on, on bringing in another right back, but then we can't buy a defensive midfielder and an attacking midfielder. You know, we can either buy a right back on one of those two positions or maybe, you know, maybe, you know, not any of them. Or we bring in Sidibe because it's easy. The player's already integrated into the squad. He'll be for cheap. Uh, his wages will probably be easy to negotiate and he'll be able to come in straight away and it'll be done and dusted very quickly. And then we can focus more time and, and money uh, on, you know, the, the other two key positions, which for me are attacking midfield and defensive midfield. Now, don't get me wrong. Somebody might be sitting there thinking... 
you know, that's a load of shit. Ancelotti and, and Marcel Brands have got more than enough time to look for a different right back as well as two midfielders. They might have, but I just think with the current financial situation at the moment, um, Everton probably aren't going to spend an awful lot of money this season. We've heard in, with previous reports from the Liverpool Echo and other media outlets saying that Everton are going to prioritise loans and maybe swap deals this season. I think that they're going to want as much time to, to spend and as much money you know out of the, the the budget that we have to spend on the key positions and for me those key positions are right back and two midfielders however the right back position is pretty much already filled if we if we take the option yes it's not an ideal yes he's not absolutely perfect and defensively he's not great but you know he, he's there at the moment and he will fill in in a space for the moment so the of course he, he can do a job um, and if that means that we can go out and spend a little bit more time looking at an attacking midfielder and a defensive midfielder and let's for argument's sake we can bring in a disagreement again on loan and maybe a good young attacking midfielder who's very very creative scores goals assists gets himself about a little bit Jack Grealish-esque um, in that midfield and we bring Sidibe in I'd take that I'd take that over bringing a set a different right back in that there's no guarantee they're going to be able to play um, you know well consistently for the football club there's no guarantee they're going to settle at the football club and not being able to get one of the other two key positions or if any of the other two key positions because I think two midfielders are absolutely so so necessary this summer um, because we cannot be going into the new season with just Andre Gomez, Gilfie Sigurdsson, Morgan Schneidlin, uh, Fabian Delph and Tom Davis as our midfielders because there's no energy in there, there's no pace in there, there's not enough creativity whatsoever, there's not enough ability in there either. We can go in with those five midfielders if we're happy to can. Uh, concess that we'll finish you know mid table next season you know 10th to 8th again but if we really really want to be pushing towards the European places next season we need to bring in two midfielders and um, for me I think you know a defensive midfielder is a necessity now that Kabamon's picked up another injury and I also think that you know an attacking midfielder or a creative midfielder per se is, is an essential um, as well now obviously you know there's been a little bit of discussion surrounding defensive midfielders over the last week or so we spoke about a just on on Tuesday there's been a little bit of discussion about Wendell as well who's another defensive midfielder but I believe he's Brazilian correct me if I'm wrong um We'll get into the live comments in just a minute, by the way. Um, do not worry about that. Uh, but there's been a lot of discussion about uh, you know defensive midfield, and it makes me think that Everton were almost in the market for the defensive midfield there. Um, you know, even if Jean Philippe Cabaman was was still fit and, uh, and was able to play. Um, and again, I, I think that I think that's a really really good thing to do because it gives competition for Cabaman, and ultimately it means that you've got two players of a decent quality in one position rather than one player of a decent quality in one position you know there's nothing in football that states you can only have one good player in a position and every other player that plays in that position has to be significantly worse you're more than allowed to have two fantastic quality players who play in the same position who can fight out for that position um so obviously onto a Jitter Garnagay there still hasn't been a direct rumour linking Garnagay with the move to Everton he did have a little bit of a flirt on on Instagram I believe somebody put up a I think it was like a montage of his best moments at Everton and he sort of quoted it with a heart face or something like that but that means absolutely nothing in this day and age we know that um but there hasn't been an official rumour all as we know is that according to reports in France PSG may be looking to sell a Jitter Garnagay uh, and they're also what to bring in a significant um you know uh, uh, wanting to bring in a, a, another striker i believe uh in which they'll be paying significant amounts of money to a week and therefore they're probably going to have to you know get a few players off the wage bill and ship a few players out now do i think everton will sign a uh, just a permanently no do i think there's a chance everton will sign a just a on loan yes i think if we go to psg and say right okay well we'll take him off your hands for 12 months we'll take his wages off your hands so that you can use that money towards whoever you want to bring in uh, we'll give him game time and then in a year you can decide whether you want him back or not or you can put a clause in the contract that we pay 20 odd million pound for him or something and we bring him back and I know he'll be you know 32 at that point but ultimately if that's what we have to do in order for PSG to say yeah okay you can have him I'd do it because I think a disregarded would fit into this team perfectly like a hand in a glove and uh, he'd fill in the hole that he left when he went uh, you know he fill in the hole that he left when he went to PSG uh, and ultimately he would be that 
ideal central defensive midfielder that we need. You know, um, Gabamon obviously come in to replace Gay. Gabamon struggled with injuries, and if Gay is out of favour at PSG, and maybe PSG are looking to move him on, why don't we approach them and say, listen, we're, we need a central defensive midfielder. We're desperate for them. We probably haven't got 40, 30, 40 million pounds to spend on one at the moment because of what's going on in the world. So why don't we loan Gay back from you, give him another year in the Premier League, another year's playing time so he's not sitting on the bench or sitting on the sidelines, you know, wasting money and will pay his wages. Um, I, I think that could be an interesting offer for PSG and, and I do see them potentially taking that um, obviously it helps us and I've seen a lot of fans saying you know don't go backwards he's 31 you know it, it, again we, there's no guarantee he'd be able to come in and do what he'd done in those seasons at Everton there's no guarantee he'd be able to do what he'd come in and done uh, 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 for those seasons before he left PSG but I would be much more confident bringing a Disagana Gay back into the 7th team than bringing Wendell into the 7th team or bringing another central defensive midfielder that's either not played for Everton before or not played in the Premier League before I'd be much more confident bringing in a player that we know is top top class does all of the dirty work does all of the running around does all the getting involved slide tackling and has got more energy than anybody I've probably ever seen in an Everton shirt even at 31 years of age I've watched I've watched Garner Gay for PSG and if you haven't watched Garner Gay for PSG since he's left um you may think, oh, he must have gone downhill. His age must be cashing up with him. He mustn't be as good as he was. He's absolutely fantastic. He's one of the best midfielders in their team when he plays. He's solid. He, he does exactly what he does for Everton. He's brilliant. He really, really is brilliant. I just don't think he suits their style of play. And he's getting towards that age now where they're probably going to look to move him on so they can make a little bit more money from him before he you know, he starts to have no resale value. And I think Everton should, should pounce on that a little bit. It benefits Everton. It benefits PSG. And, you know, as long as the player wants the return, which is the biggest issue I think I think the biggest issue is in Everton wanting to disagree on a gay or or PSG being willing to sell a Drissagana gay, I think the biggest issue is a Drissagana gay wanting to come back to Everton. And I just feel like he might sort of look at it and think, well, I left for my dream club. I'm at my dream club now. If they don't want me, I want to go and look at somewhere else. I don't necessarily want to take a step back, um, which is fair enough on his part, but I suppose we don't know that unless we approach the player. He might turn around and go, yeah, boss, loved Everton, loved every minute of it. Felt a little bit you know, lost while I've been at PSG. It's been an honour, but I felt a little bit lost. I'll come back to Everton for the season. And we, can, we only know that if, if we ask, and ultimately if we're in the market for a central defensive midfielder, then why not ask PSG if they're willing to to sell Garner Gay or, or even loan him and why not ask Garner Gay if he'd be willing to come back to Everton if he says no sad we go and look for somebody else we go and look at a Wendell or we go and look at another player but the last thing I'd want is for us to go no we're not even going to approach this of Garner Gay because we're not going back there bringing a defensive midfielder who ultimately can't do the job as well as Garner Gay could or doesn't settle in as fast as we need him to and then think how we probably should have gone and got gay there, you know, either, either fit in perfectly. So, obviously, there's that discussion, and, and like I said, you know, you know <clears throat> ultimately last night, the, you know, the Premier League announced the return, announced that Everton will play Liverpool within the next three weeks or so, 20th of June, and then one of the players that we've been so, so looking forward to seeing um, ever since he joined Everton, really, Jean Philippe um, you know, suffered another injury this time to his Achilles, and he's likely to be out for at least six months. Um, so, again, <sighs> It's just, it's just pure unlucky on John Philip Abamon's part, and I really, really do feel sorry for him, I do. Uh, we'll dive into the live comments then. Let me see what everybody has to say. Lewis says, hey, Cam, I already made a video on this shocking news to hear today. Yeah, well, listen, it is, and again, I think we all need to <clears throat> realise, I said it before, we all need to realise that it's not John Philip Abamon's fault that he's picking up these injuries. It's just pure unlucky. Um, and that's why we shouldn't be on his back. That's why we should support him. That's why the club need to support him as well. Uh, he also says, all right, lads. Juden says, Everton linked with Fafana, with St. Etienne forced to cash in on, uh, according to the Liverpool Echo. Yeah, St. Etienne, have, 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 there's a couple of players being linked with moves away from St. Etienne because they, they may be forced to, to sell. Um, where are we? Where are we? Juden says, La Liga to restart on June the 11th. Interesting. He also says, Merseyside Police issue statements over Premier League stadium plan. I haven't seen that yet. Um, Coleman's had an interview as well. Craig Knight says, I just can't help but laugh. Effing typical support and Everton is sure one of a kind. Well, it is. And again, like I said, the Premier League announced a return to football and one of our players who, who, who would be, and again, I'll say this confidently, even though we haven't seen an awful lot of Sean Philip Abamon, he would be a starter in this team if he is fit. Um, I 100% believe that. 
and you know he unfortunately goes and gets another injury hazard says all right come up you are okay with you and your family are well keep up the great videos and scenes remember like the stream hit that like thank you very much mate retweet and subscribe as well thank you very much hazard really do appreciate that i'm not doing too bad mate hope you're doing well abigail says i'm good for him he's not injury prone he's been unlucky twice with bad injuries this could have happened to any player exactly and then again <clears throat> The injuries that he's had have been two really, really serious injuries uh, in this, you know, back to back with each other uh, without even kicking a football competitively. He's had what one behind closed doors friendly in between two of the biggest injuries you can get in football. So you, you just have to feel sorry for him. You do. Uh, Hazard says, Hi, all listeners. Hope all okay and keep well. He says, Heitinger explains how fight and we created the family at Everton. He did. He's had an interview as well. Love Johnny Heitinger. Um, <clears throat> Thiago Silva's to be presented with an offer apparently Paul says we bought Peter Reid after having two leg breaks exactly two broken legs sorry uh, exactly and what an absolutely fantastic player Peter Reid was legend at Everton Football Club um, and a fantastic player um, Eugene says when can clubs buy players um, well obviously when the transfer window opens we don't know when that'll be we don't know if it'll be at the same time it usually is or if it'll be pushed back because of what's going on but clubs can buy players now they just can't officially buy them Watford bought a player a couple of weeks ago um, Wayne says what's all this really harsh for the lad uh, but that's his Everton career over it is really harsh and at the end of the day you know we just have to support him and, uh, and I, I do think he can come back from this I do and I think bringing a player in not only helps us but i honestly think i'm gonna look at that and go right okay now i've got something to work towards i've got something to work towards i've got some competition so i can think i want to get back into this Everton team and i want to beat him for his place rather than just thinking uh, you know pondering over the injury ultimately hazard says all right when we hope you're okay um when we says how's everyone doing i'm not too bad lavid says to be honest the only results i'm looking for is no negative tests um no negative tests? Do you mean you want positives? Surely you can't want positives. Wemmy says, hit the like, guys. What's going on? Thank you very much. Wemmy says, I have a question, Cameron. I remember you were anti Moyes returning. As you said, it's going backwards, yet you would have a Twitter back. I was anti David Moyes returning, and the reason why I was anti David Moyes returning is because since David Moyes has left Everton Football Club, he's done nothing. He's failed at every single club he's been at. He's failed at Man United. Now, I know that he's done better than certain managers have done since then, but ultimately, he's failed at Man United. He failed miserably at Real Sociedad. He failed at Sunderland, he got them relegated, he done okay at West Ham and he's doing okay now but he's not a manager that will take us into the Champions League and challenge him for league titles and that is what the ambition that the club are setting out. Now it's just a gone again, left Everton and will be coming back to Everton as still a fantastic defensive midfield player. If, for example, Romelu Lukaku left Everton as a really, really good striker, would you have him back now? Probably because he's still a really, really good striker. Um, I don't know, what's another example? Jack Rodwell left Everton as a, as a as a decent midfielder. Would you have him back now? No, because he's no longer a decent midfielder. It, it, it's all subjective, isn't it? And ultimately, that's why I've gone back. I'm not really one for the don't go back. I was in the don't go back um, camp for, for David Moyes because he's done nothing since leaving Everton and it lacks ambition and he wouldn't get us into those positions that the club are, are stating they want to be in. Um, but I think it's different with Carnegie. Lavid says, unless people use the opportunity to raise awareness for the NHS, I won't be watching. Um, they could put NHS donations line in the corner of the screen. I assume that's for when the football returns. Eugene says, a contact chain and return to USM Finch Farm on Thursday. Uh, and there is a video of that as well on Everton's YouTube channel. You can check that out. Uh, Wayman says, I love Garner. I think we probably did well selling them for the money we did and we should look for a younger player now. Gabamon's out. We need a new Gabamon. Yeah, and potentially, I'd love us to go out and, and, <clears throat> and look for a younger player. Um, but I just don't know if we can risk that at the moment or we should just bring in the player that we know can do the job uh, and then ultimately maybe bring Gay in. Like I said, if we bring Gay in for, for a season on a season loan, he fills the spot for the season and then ultimately not only does that give John Philip Gabamon time to recover and, and hopefully get back to fitness and get back into the team, but it also allows Marcel Blanc and Carlo Ancelotti to look at it and go, right, okay, now we can look at bringing in uh, a younger um, central defensive midfield that's you know more got more longevity. Um, but that's why I'm saying a loan for the going to get a season-long loan or maybe a, a two-season-long loan may be ideal. Uh, Hazard says, yeah, definitely hit the like only three. If you could hit the like button, it means a massive, massive amount to me. I hope you all are enjoying the stream so far. Let me know your thoughts in the live comments. If you're watching live, of course, if you're watching a YouTube video, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, Wemmy says, are you here, Jess? How are you doing? I'm not too sure if she is, to be honest with you, mate. Um, Lavid says, what would you do to attract... To attract... Oh, yeah, there's another one. Um, what would you do to make the presentation better on TV, considering a lack of fans, YouTube comments presented when a goal is scored. Oh, don't know about that. Don't know about that, mate. I can imagine that to be a little bit feisty. Imagine 
Imagine Everton a 3 0 down at half time, and then we can see the fourth, and then they put the YouTube comments on below the yell. That'd be a shit show. That um, I get where you're coming from, though. There definitely does need to be more sort of, um, you know, interaction with the fans, certainly because there'll be no fans at the stadium. But I honestly don't think Sky, BT, any of them. I don't think they give a shit about fans, mate. I really, really don't. Uh, Aiden says, "Hi, mate. Would you set, uh, be selling Pickford in the summer or give him one more season to prove himself?" I give him one more season, um, not only because I think he, he deserves one more season to prove himself, but also because I think if we sell Jordan Pickford, it just adds another issue to our team of having to go out and bring in a replacement. And there's already enough key positions that we need to focus on now without you know making another one. Um, Wim says, "It depends what your objectives are, Cam. We are not going to challenge for anything. We are a club that needs rebuilding. Might as well use the time." while everything is, is crazy to get young players they should just give cam a job on the presentations you wouldn't get a chance to be bored thank you mate thank you i, I love a job but they'll never do that because i'm too opinionated um yeah no I, I i see where you're coming from i do see where you're coming from and like i said i always say this when i talk about you know i i, I when i'm saying if we want to be fighting for the premier league if we want to be fighting for the champions league i know that there's a lot of people listening to that going what's this kid chatting about he's chatting absolute shit we're rebuilding you know we've got shocking players in the squad we've got an average team what are you talking about fighting for the premier league but i'm just going off what the club are saying what they're saying in the agms they want to be achieving what they're saying in the meetings they want to be achieving so that's sort of what i'm going off um but i do see where you're coming from i do and i, and I agree I, I agree with it i do um Eugene says new dates announced for the fa cup ties yeah i believe it's the first of august i think for the final it has a test be the recovery compartment, of course. Cancer time, mate. Just watched our video, mate. Great video. Uh, as you know, I'm really disappointed about Kabamon's injury. Garner has been class for PSG. It's just they want Pogba or Kante and make the money up for Pogba and not get done by financial fair play. There you go. It was a really, really good video. So if you haven't seen my video with uh, Cal, our video with Cal, it went out last night. It was the one about Carlo Ancelotti's man management. After this live stream, definitely go and check that out. It's a really interesting video. I agree as well, Cal. Uh, PSG are probably looking for a younger, um, you know, sort of more marketable name in in, in a Pogba or a Kante uh, and that's why they're looking to get rid of um, K. Uh, Seda says Kabama must be absolutely gutted he can't play again for such a long stretch can't be frustrated with him it's just one of those things not sure it makes sense to spend big money and huge wage on K. fair point and I agree he must be absolutely gutted and again that's why I'm saying maybe a loan deal for K would be a little bit um, you know more ideal yes he probably still want, would want quite big wages but if we can get him on loan I'd pay him 130 grand a week because it means that we fill that spot and we don't have to worry about that position for at least a year. We're not spending big money on him in terms of transfer fees. Yes, okay, his wages are a lot, fair enough, and that's probably not ideal in this day and age at this time with what's going on, but he fills a space that we desperately need to fill it at the end of the day. Lava says, I mean, no positivity. Uh, Nets, obviously, is like normality. Oh, there you go, fair enough. Um, Hernandez says, what's all this going on? What do you think happens with Davis long term? I think he's probably... A good squad player. He's not good enough to play week in, week out. Uh, but he's a good squad player that could come in handy if we're, if we're getting into European competitions, etc. Uh, Sanders says, loan potentially, like you say. Yeah, yeah, uh, about gay. Uh, Wemi says, I agree with that about Moyes. Um, but would have had him over pretty much anyone bar Rafa and the big man we got. Uh, but think same applies to Garner. We might as well test new blood. Yeah, I, I again, with the, the Moyes situation, he was a better option than some. But, like I said, he obviously he was nowhere near as good an option as Carlo. Uh, and fair point as well. George, should we name a stand-up Bramley Moore after little boy blue Reese Jones? I'd absolutely be made up if we did, mate. Uh, I don't know whether they would, but I'd absolutely have no issues with that whatsoever. <clears throat> Robbie says... Uh, I think Obama may struggle to ever play for us again at 120 minutes of football in 18 months. Still not used to English football and likely we signed two midfielders this summer at 25. It's an ask. It is an ask, but then it's down to him when he regains fitness to have that fire in his belly to want to come back and to want to prove a lot of people wrong. And I, and I do think he will have that. Now, it's my mistake here. Leaders, positive news means good news sometimes. Uh, Wim says, it's his age. I love Garner, but we realistically are two seasons away from being a challenger for things. And by then, Garner is 33, 34 and then would need replacing. I agree. And maybe that's why we should probably look towards a loan a bit more than, than it may be a permanent. Um, Lavit says, I was amused by your reaction to my YouTube idea. Of course, some comments may be deleted. Ha. No, yeah, listen, I, I agree with it. And he wouldn't be putting up, like, imagine imagine we, we conceded the fifth goal and, and BT by accident put up a comment that said, fuck off, Pickford, you're shite, fuck off. And they just put up that comment and was like, oh, shit, we'll have to get rid of that. Um, but, of course, listen, I, I agree. It's a, it's, a, it's a great idea and they do need to ensure that there is still that, 
there is still that connection with fans, um, but I just don't know how, how much they care about that. We all care about it because we're fans, but I don't know how much those big companies care about it. When he says, with the commandment, it's the same. He may recover, but the club has to fill that position, and by the time he is back, probably going to be tough to get in and probably uh, save him. Better to, uh, to recover at a less demand than club, hence Everton might be questionable for them. Fair point. And Ian says, don't know why they would want Kante ahead of Garner. Garner, I'll play Kante for us in the last two times we played Chelsea. Yeah, listen, Garner is a better player than Kante. I'm not hearing otherwise. Um, but Pogba, for example, I see why they'd want... I, I, th I, th I think Garner's a better player than Pogba as well, if I'm being honest. You might call me stupid, but Pogba's obviously a massively uh, marketable name and they'll sell loads of shirts and they'll get loads of fans wanting to come in and watch him. So I understand that. He even says BBC to show live Premier League matches. They are, they are. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's live stream. If you have enjoyed, please do hit that like button. It does only take a second. If you're new to the stream as well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're well on our way now towards 1,800 subscribers. So if you could subscribe if you knew it, mean a massive amount to me. If you've subscribed already, big, big thank you. Uh, don't forget to share the channel, share the streams all over social media. Let's get as many people involved in the discussion as possible. We'll be back on Monday, 5.15 p.m. for another live stream. So don't forget to join us for that one. It will be the Talking Rubbish Transfer Show as usual. We'll be talking about Wendell. We may be talking a little bit more about Adrissa Garner Gay. We'll be talking about uh, Godin as well, Diego Godin from... Um I think he's uh, he's in, in Italy now, is he? Uh, used to be of, of Atletico Madrid. In fact, he may still be there. Uh, but we'll be talking about them on Monday, quarter past five, at the Talking Rubbish Transfer Show. Uh, big thanks to everybody for getting involved in the live comments. As per usual, really, really do appreciate all of your support. If you're watching in the YouTube comments, as a YouTube video, leave your thoughts in the comments down there, and I'll get involved with as many of them as possible. Uh, Hernandez says, hope they play the Derby at Goodison and play the fans over the PA system. That's what Bruce Dortmund did. Yeah, that'll be great, mate. That'll be great. I uh, don't know how it'll quite work, but it would be great at Dortmund did do something very similar you're right William says take care guys thank you very much and Eugene says see you by up the toffees have a good weekend thank you very much Eugene and you too big thanks for watching please hit the like button if you've enjoyed subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues